Greetings, this is Ahsoka Tano. I hope all goes well for you. A few months back we've talked a bit about AI image generators and I'm sure many of you guys have been using them too. Back then it was still a hit and miss thing but you could still tell something was off, like the dark side has corrupted them. However, an alternative method to train AI image models was introduced known as LoRa, unlike the usual method which trains the entirety of the model. LoRa focuses only on certain layers of the neural network, and using it you need not use entire models from scratch, which takes up a lot of memory. With the use of LoRa, you could easily combine the unique properties of AI image models, such as combining a model which can produce proper human anatomy with a model trained on anime pictures. In this video, I'm just going to run down how to train a LoRa AI model on Google Collaboratory and how to use it in a typical web user interface. Anyways, as per any AI image model, you would want to prep a dataset first. For this tutorial, we'll be using certain characters from Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic taken from various sources. You may gather up to 20 for decent results, or 30 to 100 per character for even better results. Once you have gathered these images, you can put them onto this site, Beermet for auto-cropping. Depending on which LoRa model you use, you either crop the images to a resolution of 512 by 512 pixels or 768 by 768. You can manually adjust the cropping accordingly to make sure the subject is centered. Do include a healthy variety of full body shot, upper body and face portraits of the characters. Unlike the previous tutorial a few months back, we won't be renaming the images according to their subjects, rather we will simply separate them into folders with their names. So all these Bastilla photos will go into the folder Bastilla and so on. Take note of the spelling of the names of the folders, for these are the words you will be using in the text to image model. After that, simply zip up these folders into an archive and upload it to Google Drive. After this, you can go to the Laura Google Collaboratory Notebook, written and maintained by Linacruf, linked in the description below. As usual, you will click on Runtime and change the runtime type to GPU. Normally T4 should be the best option. Then we go on to the first cell. We would just leave the branch text box empty and check the Mount Drive checkbox to mount the Google Drive. There will be two pop-ups to authorize your use of the notebooks. Just acknowledge them. The installation will take a while, as there are many things to install onto the environment, but once that is done, the other steps are much faster. I'll normally skip step 1.2, but you can use it if you want an easier interface to browse the environment. After this, we can move on to downloading the base models to train from. If you have custom models you want to train from, you can use step 2.2, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll stick to downloading the AnyLora checkpoint, which is based off Stable Diffusion 1.5. Step 2.3 is to download a VIE, but I found no significant change in quality for the model, but it will be useful for things such as in-painting. Next are the steps to extract the training data into the environment. Run step 3.1. If your drive is already mounted, you can skip step 3.2 and simply run the code seen on the screen. Step 3.3 is redundant since we've already manually gathered our data, which brings us to part 4, which is the data cleaning and labeling. For step 4.1, we will run this cell to remove any incompatible file formats like GIF or WebP. Do also check this box if you have images with transparent backgrounds. If you are using it for multi-concept training, be sure to check the recursive so that it can read the subfolders as well. Then for step 4.2, there are two options for labeling the images. Blip for general images and Waifu Diffusion for anime pictures. Since everyone is always divided on who's the best Star Wars waifu, we'll stick to using Blip here. Remember to check the recursive box here as well to ensure every image gets a tag. A .caption file will be produced for every image file you have in your dataset, which contains a short description of every image. You can then use Step 4, 2.3 to add additional trigger words to the image, change the extension to .caption, check on append, add the name of the character into the custom tag and subfolder text boxes. Remember that these should correspond with the name of the trigger words you want to use in your text to image generation. And with this out of the way, you can now proceed to configuring the model. Under the model config, remember to check the V2 checkbox if you're using Stable Diffusion 2 as your base model. Under the project name text box, type in the name of your LoRa model. Edit the paths accordingly. Check Output to Drive to save your models on your Google Drive. 
For the dataset config, remember to change the extension type to dot caption. And you can keep the settings for steps 5.3 and 5.4 on default. If you want to train the model longer, you could increase the number of epics. And finally, before you train the model on step 5.5, you would want to make the following modifications to the dataset config setting each dataset subfolder to a corresponding activation word. For instance, the activation word for the Visas Mar subfolder will be, obviously, Visas Mar, and so on. The sample prompt will be used by the AI model to produce a result for every checkpoint saved so you can modify it accordingly and track your progress. Once that is settled, just let the program run and come back when it's finished. Once you're done training the LoRa model, we can move on to testing it out. Be sure to have the LoRa model downloaded in the Models LoRa folder in the Web UI subdirectory. A video highlighting how to install the Stable Diffusion Web UI locally will be made down the line. On the Web UI, ensure that you can select your base model, which is any LoRa in this case, on the top left-hand corner. Under the Generate button, click on the third button to display the LoRa models. Click on the one you wish to use, and you will notice that this bit of text has been added to the prompt text box. You can adjust the weights accordingly from 0 to 1 to see how much it'll affect the result. Next, I'll just paste a quick baseline prompt here and add these additional words to produce a nice selfie of Bastila Sean. Under the negative prompt, you may want to add these words like so, in addition to many other things such as JPEG artifacts, blurry photos, and so on. Prompts such as 8K photo, best quality may give you better results, but just let the model run its generation And there you go, a quick photo of Bastila Shan. Kill him, master. Now let's try out another example. For a character like Visa's Mar, you would need to be a little more precise with your words. Since she wears a red veil covering those eyes, you would want to include that in your prompt as well. Imagine its energy, its texture, in tandem with the breathing. Okay, that's a quick rundown of how to train a LoRa model and how to use it on stable diffusion. You can try combining your LoRa models with other ones and produce some interesting pictures. But anyways, I'm running out of Eleven Labs voice credits, so I can't stick around for long. If you're new to the channel, do consider liking and subscribing, and may the force be with you.